ask in here with me. This ain't a diss song, but um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheesehead, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. Yeah. Pull up in your town when you see me, you know everything. Green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow. Yeah. I put it down, representing for my team. I'm in green. Limiting explosive plays or trying to, to cut that down. Um, first off, is it do you consider explosive 15 and up or 20 and up? Yeah, I think everybody has a different definition. I mean, usually we're if it's a uh, if it's a run over um, over 10 and a pass over 15. I mean, I know that for some people that's probably a little little strict. Some people are more like 15 and 20, but it's just all how you how you define it. Is, so is there a, uh, I know at least of the 20 plus plays, I didn't go down that far. Um, 29 have happened on first and second down. Is there a common theme there or is it just because offenses like to take shots or try to scheme up some? some no, I do think offenses are doing a better job of, of throwing it on on rundowns and, and, and vice versa. Uh, and and we, we chart them uh, and, and always look back when we have the explosives and, and try to look at why. Was it was it the was it the scheme? Uh, was, was it was it the technique we were playing? Or was it was it the, was it personnel? So over over time, you get a pretty good sense of you know hey if it's if it's uh, you know personnel, you need to address it. If it's scheme, it's something hey we need to either fix it or take it out. And if it's technique, it's something we need to we need to drill or you know, practice better. So we're, I guess we're, how as you've gone along, I'm sure it's all combinations of that. <laughs> It's a lot of different things. Typically, when, when you have a when you give up an explosive, usually it's more than one player that's making a mistake. It, it, that's that's typical, um, and it's you, you, usually if you miss a tackle, you're, you're you have a pretty good chance, especially with his you know, with some of the athletes in this league. And we and we knew that's I mean that was Casey's thing that that um, uh, you know, that they have those those types of players that, that if you do miss you know that's it's, there's a very slim margin for error that that they can be be in your secondary in a hurry. Mike, so you've had a couple of games where teams have had buys and time to prepare for you, and now you got to face uh, offense or new offensive coordinator. Does that cause you to have to go back and look more at what Anthony Lynn did um, as opposed to what Wittenhunt did? Well, it's, uh, I think it would be difficult to, to put in to revamp the offense entirely. Uh, and I've been involved in situations before where you do have a change in play caller. I don't think I, I don't know how much their inventory is going to change. I, I just think it's how it's being called and, and what's being called and what's what's being highlighted <clears throat> and what they ch choose to have up against us. Uh, and having worked with Anthony before, and then also knowing what what he accomplished in in Buffalo, uh, you know, being a running backs coach. I mean, he he wants to wants to run the ball, uh, and I, I think he's. You know, looking at his history has, has been very creative in in uh, in finding ways to, to be productive in the run game. So uh, certainly think that that the the number of runs and, and maybe even the types of runs will will uh, will change. But uh, you know there is there is some unknown. So you know we can prepare for you know we don't want to chase ghosts. I mean we we want to prepare for for what we've seen on tape uh, and make sure that just like any other game, if, we, if we're getting some unscouted stuff, that we're we're prepared to game adjust. You know, I want, I want to ask about the, the buys, too, um, with the two back-to-back -back buys and then the, the mini-buy. Um, you probably can't quantify it, but is that a part of your issues on defense, do you think, as teams have had so much extra time to prepare for what you're doing compared to you to prepare against them? Does that cause you some issues, do you think? Or? It, it has, because I think in all three cases that, that we had felt like we had some, some pretty good tendencies, and most teams, when they have time and they will be, you're able to sit back and reflect, you you, you've discovered them yourself, yourself, and, and and make some changes. So we had some some tendencies broken, uh, but I don't think that would be a, a, a major thing. I, I would think maybe more rested players would have more of an influence, more of an impact than necessarily just the the, the extra time to prepare and and, uh, and and scheme for us. It's it has something to do with it, but it's it's just hard to quantify what what the impact was. Do you, do you feel like if you get the big plays? Um, tone down some that you're going to be right where you want to be defensively. It seems like it seems like on a play-to-play -play basis you're you're mostly fine. It's just yeah, those. That, that's a lot of teams. I mean, it's easy to say like 
hey, just take out these five plays and you know, we gave well, them, sure, we gave them 150 yards. But, but I, I know, I, I just, I, I understand your point. It's not like it's, we're steadily giving up chunks and then even bigger ones that, that for good stretches of the game where we are playing how we, how we want to play. And, and we've talked about it in, in our room that, that, you know, we are where we are record wise and we're, we're thrilled about that. Uh, but the, the positive thing is, is our, our guys know how much better we can be. And, and that's at the heart of it is making sure guys understand, you know, we talk about doing your job, doing your 111th. Uh, and a big part of doing your job is knowing your job. Uh, so that's the, the prep part of it is, uh, is big. And then it's having the ability to go out and, and execute on, on a big stage. And uh, we, just, we just haven't been consistent enough uh, and, and just looking forward to the, to the second half of the year that, that if, to your point, if we do get that cleaned up, we, you know, we think we could be significantly better. Mike, was, uh, was Tyler Lancaster just in the right place at the right time? Or did he diagnose something and see that play? Uh, he was, he was, uh, was doing a real nice job stalemating the block. And, and as we teach those guys, as, as the running backs coming through the hole, uh, you know, he, just, he just threw his arm out to, to at least try to slow him down. Uh, you know, and it, and it ended up, you know, hit the, he hit the tail end of the ball. So, I mean, it was a, that was a heck of a play. And then, you know, obviously it, it ended up bouncing, bouncing right back to him. But uh, I, do, I do know that this year that, and I think we're right around maybe even halfway through, we've, I don't know if we're, clo we're probably close to re reach the number of takeaways we had all of last year. And, and I don't think that's, a, that's by accident. I mean, it's something that we, we've talked about since, since the spring and just emphasis on attacking the football and reaching for it and punching at it. Uh, and we've had, you know, we, we've had some r real nice plays made and some, and some close calls. I mean, Jair almost got one out the other night. We've, uh, so, did, so did Z. Uh, but I just think that continuous emphasis on it, uh, especially in practice, uh, going back all the way to the spring, but even, even still now, we stress it. Uh, and, our, and our guys have bought into it, and, and uh, we've gotten the results. What does uh, Warren Burks have to do to get back on the field? I mean, what does he have to show you? Uh, I don't think it's anything he, he has to show. It's it's just a matter of working him back working him back in. A lot of the stuff that we're playing uh, only involves one linebacker, whether it's a five down front with one linebacker or it's a four down front with a linebacker and then a, a safety playing the uh, playing the dime spot. Uh, and then and BJ Goodson's done a done a good job for us. He's made some some Im impactful plays. Uh, so his time will come. Uh, it's it's not something we need to force. But right now it's just the the style of the teams that we're playing, and we're getting so much of of you know, spread groupings, and you know, we're we're not getting a ton of where it's you know, two tight ends and a fullback, and and where where we would be in more base defense, where where he and, and BJ would be more involved. So. Uh, you know, when when his when his repetitions do increase, I mean, I'm I'm confident that um, you know that, that he'll be ready to, to step up and be productive for us. It's easier for us to look at that Kelsey touchdown and say, oh, Blake just should have followed him. But with everything that was going on, I think he had three fake handoffs on that play. What exactly broke down on that one? Um, yeah, actually, that that wasn't that wasn't on Blake. That was uh, we were in man coverage, but it wasn't it, it wasn't Blake's man. So we had what we call an eye violation. You know, we had. A, Guy with bad eyes, and and that, that's what their that's what their offense is designed to do. Is that that uh, you know we're constantly preaching, keep your eyes on your work, and offenses like the Chiefs make that difficult with with all the misdirection and the and the motions and the shifts and the and the you know pre snap move and end post snap. So uh, you know, that that's a good lesson. I mean, our our guys need to you know when they're we so we talk about doing your job the one eleventh um, before you look to do anything else. Make sure make sure your job is is. Uh, is secured. Is there an art to uh, going for the ball, but also making sure you get the tackle? I'm not saying going for the ball has led to some of the missed tackles, but how do you make sure you're putting yourself in a good position for a takeaway, but also make sure you tackle? Well, it's it's, it's something something we work. I mean, it, for sure, when if if they feel the tackle's being secured by somebody else, that uh, feel free to go in and rip at the ball. But the, the other thing that we've emphasized is. Uh, we call it, you know, tackling at the level of the ball. So when you go to wrap your arms around a ball carrier, if you if you can consciously get your arms at the level of where he's holding the ball, now you have a pretty good chance to you get the best of both worlds. I'm, I'm making the tackle, but at the same time, there's there's a good chance I'm gonna I'm gonna get my hand at least you know on his arm or, or around where where the ball is. Um, also, when we're we're tracking a guy from behind, 
you, you have that, you want to secure. I mean, it's a drill we work every week. You want to secure with one hand and, and, and go for the ball with the other, especially when you're approaching from behind, whether you're trying to lawnmower it out or, or punch it out from behind, depending on how he's holding it. So it's something that, that, uh, that we work, and it, I think our guys are, are uh, doing a pretty good job of it. But there, there have been a few instances where going for the ball might have cost us a few extra yards. But um, you know, our, our, uh, overall, I think our guys are pretty good at it. Do you feel okay about your tackling overall? Never mind the turnover part of it, but just I'll, kind of your overall. Yeah, if, I mean, if we have one missed tackle, I don't know if I'll ever feel good about our tackles. I mean, that's something that, that we have a very high standard uh, that we want to make sure that we're we're getting guys on the ground. Um, and, and that's that's one of the biggest ways that, to, you know, as we talked about already, just the, the explosives, that it's a short pass or a handoff or something. Next thing you know, it's it's a, we have a guy unblocked at the point of attack to make a play, and, and we miss the tackle. And just the stress that puts on... Uh, the rest of the defense. So, and, and knowing that you know in the NFL it's hard to we don't live tackle in practice. It's one of the it's one of the hardest skills to kind of maintain, especially as the year goes on. As you're not doing as much individual work, we try to emphasize it as 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 best we can. Uh, but it's certainly something our guys are aware of and, and know we need to we need to be better. Is there any similarity between how they use Eckler and how um, Andy Reid uses Terry Kill? Or is he more of a traditional running back? He's he's more of a traditional running back. They do use him in some of those jobs. They'll, they have a grouping where they'll they'll play both running backs. Uh, it's similar to what the Bears did uh, with with in, in our first game with with uh, Montgomery and, and Cohen. That type of grouping. Uh, and he, he's a Eckler's a versatile athlete. I mean, they can have him. He can play traditional running back, run inside, run outside, and then split him out. He's uh, he's you know. A, Certainly a more than functional receiver, and, and then they get them get them the ball on the on the fly sweep stuff and do some gadget things with them. So, you know, it's it's not a surprise given his skill set, just how how productive he's been for him. Is going up with like, against yeah, the Philip Rivers at this point? Is there one of those things where it's just have your guys be assigned and sound as opposed to trying to throw things at him that he hasn't seen, or you know what I mean when such a catalog I guess plays that he. Yeah, I don't know if there is anything that he hasn't seen. I mean, he's just uh, just his ability to process and and uh, you know understand what you're in and anticipate what you're in, not just seeing it and identifying it. He's one of the best at identifying it pre-snap uh, and getting his his players in the right position, whether he's changing a play or setting a protection. But then he's he's as good as there is post-snap. So if you're trying to hold a look and then rotate post-snap, he. he he sees it all, so I, I think a, a a big part of our emphasis is you know he's he's likely going to know what we're doing. We we got to execute better than them, so we, we got to make sure we're winning our one on ones, whether that's you know versus an offensive lineman who's trying to run block me, or I'm or I'm rushing somebody, or or I'm covering somebody on that the outside. That you know this this is not a a big hey this is an inexperienced quarterback. We're going to try to get in his head and fool him. You know, this this is a guy that's that's seen it all, so. Uh, we don't necessarily see this game as, as a big scheme deal. As it, it's, I think it's much more execution than anything else. Two more, please. You know, you look at their numbers. Their offense isn't very good, um, but the talent is. Is it pretty easy to get your guys' attention when you point to Philip Rivers and Keenan Allen and Melvin Gordon and so on, just to say, look at the talent that they've got out there? Sure. And this is the this is the National Football League. I mean, uh, this is and this was a team that was in the in the playoffs a year ago, and and it, it, certainly they've they've. Uh, They've had their ups and downs this year, and they've played well for stretches. And then, uh, no, but anytime you're going against a, a, a quarterback that's that's as, as good as, as he is, as I, as I just talked about, with the weapons that he that he has at you know, a tight end at, at, at every level of the skill position, the tight end, uh, the, the wide receivers are, are all guys that can, you know, they're, they're they have length and they can they can go up, and he does a good job of throwing throwing them open, uh, and then they he. They're very creative with how they get the ball to the running backs uh, in space, whether that's in the run game or whether that's in a check down. They're very good in the screen game. So uh, there's there's not a lot we have to do to, to, to kind of get our guys ready for this one. I mean, as, as, the, as you hear me always say, the, you know, the film doesn't lie, and it, and it certainly isn't this week. Oh, yeah. Young Moolah, baby.